Welcome back to John's Films. I get a lot of questions on the channel about what hardware to use for DaVinci Resolve. Today I'm going to show you what I use. This is my thread smoker machine. It is a AMD Threadripper 1950X, 16 cores and 32 threads. It's the first generation Threadripper, so it's starting to show its age at two years old. However, the performance is still fantastic. It also has 64 gigabytes of 3000 megahertz RAM. It has an NVIDIA 2080 Ti graphics card in it and it has three NVMe drives. Those are the fastest types of drives you can buy with read-write speeds up to about 3,000 megabytes per second. The best thing in this entire workstation has to be the 2080 Ti graphics card. It has 11 gigabytes of VRAM, which really helps with DaVinci Resolve Studio. The 16-core processor is helpful. Uh, it allows me to do a lot of different things at once. When I'm rendering, sometimes I'll play music and work in uh, graphs and charting for some of the channel. And so I do like that it's got as many cores as it does because it balances the load pretty well and it doesn't shut down my computer to render anything. However, the 2080 Ti has 11 gigabytes of video memory and that has made a huge difference when it comes to working in timelines, loading new timelines, merging and working together with multiple projects because every time you go to a new Resolve project, it loads that timeline into your video memory and really can uh, accelerate things when you have more and more of it. Sure, I'd love to have a Titan RTX with 24 gigabytes of memory, but somewhere you got to draw the line. The other thing I like about it, even though it's really overkill and probably something where I've wasted some money is on the NVMe drives, I can move data along very quickly inside the machine because it has three of them. It has a terabyte and then two 512 gigabytes. Now before I started shooting on a Pocket Cinema 4K from Blackmagic Design, I, I had enough space with those 512 that I would work my project drive there. However, now that I'm shooting in RAW with 4K footage, I am filling up those drives quite quickly and having to offload more often. If I could do it again, I'd probably only buy one NVMe drive because I really did waste some money on that. And instead I would get a couple more SSDs that were much larger so that I could work off of those leave the NVMe drive as my operating system and DaVinci Resolve application drive and be able to save a little bit of money and probably get better utility out of the computer. The other place where I've made mistakes with this machine, when I first built it, I put two 1080 Ti's in it and the performance was awesome. It was fantastic. So why did I switch from the two 1080 Ti's? Well, for one, ray tracing rolled around and I wanted to play with it, but two, the two 1080 Ti's that I had were both with all-in-one liquid coolers attached to them. And so they had a pump, they had a fan, um, it was a little 120 millimeter fan uh, radiator that was attached to them. And frankly, it got to be a mess having to deal with two, two extra radiators uh, and two extra cords and combos and all that. And every time I had to move something around for fans or for cooling or to try something different, it got very annoying to deal with those. So I'm happy to go back to, now with the 2080 Ti, the tri-fan model, which keeps it cool enough. The challenge with it, though, when I gave up the 1080 Ti's, I ended up losing a bit of performance in Resolve. And the reason is um, I had a dedicated workhorse that was doing the UI and could pick up compute tasks when I wanted it to. And then I had a compute GPU. With the current setup, I don't have any other graphics cards in there right now to handle the UI work. And so all of it has to fall on the 2080 Ti. Now, it is powerful enough, and I definitely don't have any performance complaints, but I do believe I had better performance with two 1080 Ti's than I do with one 2080 Ti. The last thing that I put money into that maybe I didn't need to, but I still like, is the RGB. I always get comments about the RGB when I show this workstation. And really, I got it because my kid was four and just getting into computers, you want to draw for a four-year-old, put some lights in it. It really worked well. In the future, I'll likely upgrade this machine to a Threadripper 3 configuration. And for two major reasons, if I were to go to the new Ryzen chips, which would be an excellent choice for a Resolve workstation build these days, because their core clock and their core count have gone up dramatically, you could put a 3950X into a Ryzen machine, and if you chose your storage and your graphics cards intelligently, you'd still have enough PCIe lanes to be able to handle the workflow for DaVinci Resolve. 
my challenge is that I've got eight sticks of RAM in here already, and that Ryzen platform only supports four. So if I'm going to upgrade and switch over to Ryzen, I have to buy all new RAM if I want to keep 64 gigabytes of RAM. The other challenge that I've got is that with a graphics card, you're taking 16 PCIe lanes. That leaves eight PCIe lanes in the Ryzen platform. Well, I have three NVMe drives that I like to run across those lanes, and that would either throttle my graphics card back to eight lanes, or uh, I'd have to figure out a way to manage those drives and the SATA drives, which also can eat lanes, that I'd need to use so that I could work across it. If I'm going to upgrade to the Threadripper third generation, I have to buy a new motherboard because they've changed the socket and the power configuration. And that's going to put me up to $400 or $500 motherboard because the high-end desktop motherboards for the Threadripper machines are quite expensive. Then I would need to buy a new processor. Now, to get one of the newest and best processors, it'd be $2,000. It's likely that in the next six months or sooner, AMD is going to launch further improvements against their Threadripper 3 processors, all the way up to, rumored, 64 cores. I don't know that I need that to edit in DaVinci Resolve, especially with the studio version, but it sure does sound cool. So that's probably where I'm headed is somewhere around a 24 core or maybe a 32 core uh, Threadripper 3 processor when the prices drop. But right now, just the upgrade for that in the motherboard would be more than an entire new Ryzen system. So there's some trade-offs and some decisions that I'll have to make going forward. The great news is this workstation still works perfectly for me as a Resolve workstation day in and day out. Thanks for watching. I hope this has helped you understand the choices I've made in my DaVinci Resolve workstation and some of the mistakes I've made as I've changed the hardware through it. Let me know if there's any specific questions you have down below about hardware choices. Always happy to help, and I do stick to the comments pretty closely. Again, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already, and have a great day.